You shut the car off. My fellow Americans, I'm speaking to you tonight from behind the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office. In this sacred space, I'm surrounded by portraits of extraordinary American presidents. Thomas Jefferson wrote the immortal words that guide this nation. George Washington showed us presidents are not kings. Abraham Lincoln, who implored us to reject malice. Franklin Roosevelt, who inspired us to reject fear. I revere this office, but I love my country more. It's been the honor of my life to serve as your president. But in the defense of democracy, which is at stake, I think it's more important than any title. I draw strength and I find joy in working for the American people. But that, this sacred What I find sad is that I think, I think he's doing the right thing, but I, of course it was pressured. But in, in a certain way, like, dude, I think that you know for a fact, if you can go full throttle for four years, right? They, they he, dude, come on, bro. They, they probably need this like fucking three years before. Two years, bro, come on, man. Come on, man. Ask. Perfecting our union. It's not like a, oh, it's now it's I don't feel like good enough to do it. Come about on. You, your families, your futures. It's about we the people. We can never forget that. And I never have. I've made it clear that I believe America is at an inflection point. He's watching what is this like a moments in Omega. History, when the decisions we make now will determine our fate of our nation and the world for decades to come. America's going to have to choose between moving forward or backward, between hope and hate, between unity and division. We have to decide, do we still believe in honesty, decency, respect, freedom, justice, and democracy? In this moment, we can see those we disagree with, not as enemies, but as, friend, as fellow Americans. Can we do that? Does character and public life still matter? I believe I know the answer to these questions because I know you, the American people. Well, I don't know what the question was. And I know this. We are a great nation because we are good people. When you elected me to this office, I promise to always level with you, to tell you the truth. The truth, the sacred cause of this country is larger than any one of us. Those of us who cherry that cause, cherish it so much, a cause of American democracy itself, must unite to protect it. You know, in recent weeks, it's become clear to me that I need to unite my party in this critical endeavor. I believe my record as president, my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future, all merited a second term, but nothing Nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward so what, what is, is to pass that? the torch to a new generation. It's the best way to unite our nation. You know, there is a time and a place for long years of experience in public life. There's also a time and a place for new voices, fresh voices, yes, younger voices. And that time and place is now. Over the next six months, I'll be focused on doing my job as president. That means I'll continue to lower costs for hardworking families, grow our economy. I'll keep defending our personal freedoms and our civil rights, from the right to vote to the right to choose. I'll keep calling out hate and extremism, make it clear there is no place, no place in America for political violence or any violence at ever, period. I'm going to keep, keep speaking out to protect our kids from gun violence, our planet from climate crisis that is the existential Still threat. Biden watch. And I will keep fighting my, for my cancer moonshot so we can end cancer. I was right, it's no mega. Because we can do it. I'm going to call for Supreme Court reform because this is critical to our democracy, Supreme Court reform. You know, I will keep working to ensure America remains strong, and secure, and the leader of the free world. I think he's winning this one now. This is what he's winning right now. Right? 
I'm the first president in this century to report to the American people that the United States is not at war anywhere in the world. No. We'll keep rallying a coalition of proud nations to stop Putin from taking over Ukraine and doing more damage. We'll keep NATO stronger, and I'll make it more powerful and more united than any time in all of our history. I'll keep doing the same for allies in the Pacific. You know, when I came to office, the conventional wisdom was that China would inevitably, would inevitably pass the United, surpass the United States. That's not the case anymore. And I'm going to keep working to end the war in Gaza, bring home all the hostages, and bring peace and security to the Middle East and yeah, end right. this. You the text in the back on the, on the window. We're also working around the clock to bring home Americans being unjustly detained all around the world. You know, we've come so far since my inauguration. On that day, I told you, as I stood in that winter, we were stood in a winter of peril and a winter of possibilities. Peril and possibilities. We're in the grip of the war. We were in the grip of the worst pandemic in the century. The worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. The worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. We came together as Americans. We got through it. We emerged stronger, more prosperous, and more secure. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world, creating nearly 16 million new jobs, a record. Wages are up. Inflation continues Mark, to come down. I found the video. The racial wealth gap is the lowest it's been in 20 years. We're literally rebuilding our entire nation, urban, suburban, rural, and tribal communities. Manufacturing has come back to America. We're leading the world again in chips and science and innovation. We finally beat Big Farm after all these years to lower the cost of prescription drugs for seniors. Oh, man. And I'm going to... Chat, 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 what America, what world? Yo, I'm the fucking lost. What, chat, is this even close to true? That they beat Big Pharma and, and the, the costs are cut down and shit like that? Bro, it's been a fucking disaster. Keep fighting to make sure we lower the costs for everyone, not just seniors. More people have health care today in America than ever before. And I signed one of the most significant laws helping millions of veterans and their families who are exposed to toxic materials. You know, most significant climate law ever, ever in the history of the world. The first major gun safety law in 30 years. Today, violent, the violent crime rate is at a 50-year low. We're also securing our... Unless I miss, I miss saw or misheard or misanalyzed did analysis on, on whatever Mark Cuban is doing. I think Mark Cuban did pretty good with uh, his like prescription, prescription drug thing that, he, that he's doing. I found that to be pretty insightful. One person alone can do that much, they can do a lot more. Whatever he's saying, brother, I'm good on that. They did not beat Big Pharma. Border. Border crossings are lower today than when the previous a administration... A single individual did, did more than the whole government. Come on now. I've kept my commitment to appoint the first black woman to the Supreme Court of the United States of America. I also kept my commitment to have an administration that looks like America and be a president for all Americans. That's what I've done. I ran for president four years ago because I believed and still do that the soul of America was at stake. The very uh, nature of I who didn't get we right are was at stake. I didn't know. And that's still the case. America's an idea. An idea stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean, more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It's the most powerful idea in the history of the world. That idea is that we hold these truths to be self-evident. We're all created equal. Endowed by our creator of certain inalienable rights. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. We've never fully lived up to it, to this sacred idea. But we've never walked away from it either. And I do not believe the American people will walk away from it now. In just a few months, the American people will choose the course of America's future. I made my choice. Man, he's gulping harder. I made my views known. Oh my God! Oh my, dude. Vice President Kamala Harris. She's experienced. She's tough. She's capable. She's been an incredible partner to me and a leader for our country. Now the choice is up to you, the American people. When you make that choice, remember the words of Benjamin Franklin hanging on my wall here in the Oval Office alongside the busts of Dr. King and Rosa Parks and Cesar Chavez. When Ben Franklin was asked, as he emerged... Leading lobbying industries in the U.S. Pharmaceutical products, 
Pharma, uh, pharmaceutical health products, total lobbying spent a million dollars. Dude, dude, this will sound, this will, this is not a secret. But also, this, this will sound really out of touch and dumb, but I'm surprised, I'm still surprised even then that the world is so cheap. I find this to be fucking ridiculous that when you go behind the scenes, when you go behind the curtain, right? The things that hold our world together, like under, right? Like the the floor, right? So the main companies, all the all the main stuff, right? So they have to be lobbied for and shit like that, right? Is this cheap? These are all multi, ultra, super, like dozens of billions of dollars industries, right? And you can buy the whole thing for 378 mil? Really? 378 mil of lobbying and you have your entire industry making fucking like whatever dozens of billions, like hundreds of billions. That's insane. That's one of the best return on investments ever. Dude, this is one of the best return on investment in the world. You'll never have anything like it. It's, ins it's crazy. The fuck? Emerge from the, the, the convention going on, whether the founders have given America a monarchy or republic, Franklin's response was a republic, if you can keep it. A republic, if you can keep it. Whether we keep our republic is now in your hands. My fellow Americans, it's been the privilege of my life to serve this nation for over 50 years. Nowhere else on earth could a kid with a stutter from modest beginnings in Scranton, Pennsylvania. One million a year is cheap, yes. One day sit behind the and resolute That's for all the pharma. In the Oval Office as president. What, you said what? I didn't hear that. This nation for over 50 years. Nowhere else on earth could a kid with a stutter from modest beginnings in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Claymont, Delaware, one day sit behind the resolute desk in the Oval Office as president of the United States. But here I am. That's what's so special about America. We are a nation of promise and possibilities, of dreamers what, what do you mean? I don't and doers. Understand. This is not geopolitics. This, this is ordinary Americans doing extraordinary things. Bro, lobbying isn't is in geopolitics. That's just American politics. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? You're not gonna fucking diminish what I'm saying because of, of, of some fancy word of geopolitics. That's just how the fucking United States are run. It's like some. It's just how capitalism works with fucking lobbying and shit. What the fuck are you talking about? That's national, not not geo. I give my heart and my soul to our nation, like so many others. I've been blessed million times in return the love and support of the american people i hope you have some idea how grateful i am to all of you the great thing about america is here kings and dictators do not rule the people do history the is in your hands kind of fucking retarded though the power is in your hands the idea of america lies in your hands you just have to keep faith keep the faith and remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there's simply nothing, nothing beyond our capacity. We Here's a good one. What if, what if you pass a test for knowledge and for smart, right? And based on those two factors, right? Right? Your vote is worth more. Your vote is worth more points. Let, let's, let's say if you're brain dead and know nothing, your vote is worth like 0.2x. We do it together. So let's act together. Preserve our democracy. God bless you all. May God protect our troops. Thank you. What, is that a bad idea? Let's listen in.